go. We're live in L.A. It's hour three. This is The Herd. Wherever you may be and however you may be listening. iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, FS1, also on Channel 83, Sirius XM. Fascinated by Eric Dickerson's stories. He told me yesterday, had one meal, 8.30 p.m., a couple of ribs he'd made the day before. That's all he ate. Didn't have a biscuit with it. Didn't have coleslaw, mashed potatoes. Didn't have... That's it. Just two ribs. Couldn't do it. I, I, You know, you see, I eat all day. You eat more than any... You don't eat in amount more than any person I've ever seen, but the constant eating. You're a grazer. All day long. Every break, you have a snack. Every break. Have a You're snack. a snacker. I'm a snacker. I am. I just had a Fig Newton. <laughs> What's wrong? What's so funny about that? It's just so random what you eat. Too. Then I had uh, two bites of an apple, but I won't eat four. And then you'll go get like a, some popcorn or something. Oh, yeah. Half a banana. Yeah. Because if I eat too much, the blood sugar levels plummet and I'm all tired during the show. And I got to keep my energy up during the show. Right. So, That's why I eat a big breakfast. Yeah, you're a big breakfast person. Yes. But your breakfast is healthy. You have one sausage, spinach, and scrambled eggs every day. Yes, every day. And a fruit smoothie, which I drink like a quarter of, but... Yeah, that, that's... I get, I get a little bit of sugar. Eric Dickerson. Too. So think about this. He just won't eat all day. 24 hours not eating. But people do that. It's it's called um, I was something fasting. But uh, they'll eat, like, a lot when they do eat. That doesn't feel like you're... That's not good for your body. I'm an enormous 3,000-calorie meal. I think it does something to your blood sugar. I'm the worst with this stuff. I don't know how any of it works. But apparently it's good if you're trying to, like, drop a lot of weight or something. I just... I don't know. 15 minutes, Bucky Brooks, who eats regularly, I'm hoping. We're trying to get guests now that eat regularly. We're worried about their blood sugar levels. Uh, later in Best for Last, I love doing this. We call it the three-word game. Uh, we do it at the start of the NBA season. I believe you can describe every team in any sport in three words. So we'll start today with the AFC. Tomorrow we'll do the NFC. But first of all, if you didn't see it this weekend, and I'm sure with social media you certainly did, Baker Mayfield was at a Cleveland Indians game. There he is. The camera goes on him, and Baker's a quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. He's, he's there with his lovely wife and his new mustache. And uh, they take a picture of him with a beer, and he takes a beer. And then he realizes the camera's on. He goes, throw me a beer. And he bites into it, and he rips it open. And it's very funny. And, uh, you know, he points to his jersey. And, of course, Cleveland loves him because it's Cleveland. This is a franchise that hasn't had any fun at quarterback for 30 years. And Baker Mayfield's a lot of fun. And he's a showman. And he was waiting for that moment because he knew they'd put him on camera just like the underwear ads before the season started and the Cleveland Indians had fun with it and they went to Twitter and social media because they haven't won a World Series since like ever and they're making fun of me and they knew I would overreact to it but I'm not going to overreact to it because Colin what's your reaction to this Baker Mayfield is perfect for Cleveland this is an organization where Peyton Hillis, a fullback, was a really big deal. They don't celebrate championships. They don't celebrate division titles. Right now, they just want to celebrate, we got a new quarterback, and he wants to be one of us, and we would shotgun beers because it's Cleveland, and he's perfect for Cleveland because everybody that's famous in Cleveland and gets really good leaves, LeBron twice, the Rockefellers, Drew Carey, Joe Walsh of the Eagles, hell, the Browns left, Manny Ramirez, CeCe Sabathia. Of course Cleveland's putting their arms around him. Yes. Now, if I was Baker Mayfield, one in five against winning teams with a rookie head coach who's never even been hired as a coordinator. If you take two games out of Baker last year against the atrocious Bengals where he had seven touchdowns and no picks, his numbers were really, really average. Even for a rookie quarterback, they were pretty average. But be that as it may, this morning, Cleveland and Baker feel like the NFL's best frat house. Best parties, best beer chuggers, a lot of alpha, the funniest guys. Of course, like the Browns, the plumbing hasn't worked at that frat house in 28 years. And I'd never, ever want to live in a frat house. But the best time for a frat house, you guys know what it is. Now, I'm not going to speak for women in sororities, but the best time for a frat house is rush week. September! No big midterms yet. No big finals net. The front door is still on its hinges. They're throwing the best parties. The weather is perfect. Everybody still qualified for school. Nobody's been thrown out yet. It's rush week at the NFL's best frat house.
Of course, the frat house is not where you want to be during finals week. Otherwise known as January in the NFL. That's when the Steelers flourish and the Patriots flourish and the Eagles flourish and guys like Belichick and Andy Reid and Sean McVay flourish. No, 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 no. You don't, you don't want to be the best frat house during finals week. And that's what matters in the NFL, not September. But I will say... Oh, Delta Baker is a hell of a frat house here in Rush Week. But have you ever watched those movies with frat houses? Think about all the great frat house movies you've watched. You ever notice what they're always about? The frat guys, due to bad behavior, trying to keep the house. The school wants to take it back. The local municipalities want to take it back. So congratulations. I thought Baker looked like um, he was a little too good at that beer chugging. A little too good for my franchise quarterback. One in five against winning teams. But it's Cleveland. Stars leave. He's showing he loves you. He's part of you. I'm one of you. I'm wearing your jersey. I drink beer like you. I chug like you. You're mine. I'm yours. And of course, it's Cleveland. Of course, that has massive impact and feels so wonderful. And right now, they are the coolest frat on campus. Which is the best place to be during rush week, September. Nobody's flunked out yet. Um, I'll take the Steelers, Patriots, Chiefs, Colts, Eagles, and Rams during finals week. Let me shift to this. So um, Dallas Cowboys. But I want to add some context here. It is of my opinion, and perhaps my opinion only, that Dak Prescott, like a lot of young people, men and women in life, was a bit of a late bloomer and improved a lot at the end of last year. Seven and one in his last eight games. It is also of my opinion that his numbers improved more with Amari Cooper than Zeke. It is of my opinion that there is a belief in America that Dak needs Zeke. And my opinion is Dak actually matches better with Amari Cooper. In fact, I've been putting up this graph, sorry radio audience, for about two weeks. This is Dak before and after the Amari Cooper trade. So before they landed Amari Cooper... Dak was three and four after seven and two. He completed 62 before Amari Cooper, 71 after. Eight touchdowns, four interceptions before Amari Cooper, 14 touchdowns, four interceptions after Amari Cooper. But you know what's funny about that graph, Joy? You know what's really, really funny about that graph? The before column, Zeke was with Dak, and he was just okay. There's an old saying, and I've used it a couple of times, you're looking through the long, wrong end of the telescope here. Because really horrible things leave an imprint. You can remember the fight you got in with your sister, dad, mom as a kid, eight years old. You're 35, you still remember it. Those bad memories resonate, last forever. They never go away. I was just hiking this weekend with a buddy. We're talking about, isn't it random, the things that stick in your mind as a child? It's like, yeah, it's always like the scariest moment, the saddest moment, the most hurtful moment, the most terrifying moment. The good stuff, you don't remember all that. But the bad stuff, you remember. So a couple of years ago, Zeke was suspended. And Dak, the first three games without Zeke, oh, my Lord, they were terrible. Dak was terrible. But you're not remembering it quite right. Dak then stabilized and went 3-0 and in the next three without Zeke. They scored 38, 30, 20. Yes, they averaged 30 points a game for three straight games without Zeke. And just Dak. And no Amari either. By the way, Zeke came back. They lost. And, and for the record, Dak is way better today than two years ago. Amari is who he needs. I've got the numbers. Start looking at the personality. Start looking at the data. 
Start looking through the right end of the telescope. I'll say it again. Congrats on having an owner in Dallas who is tolerant of dysfunction. But I think Dak's better and Dak needs Amari more than the narrative that he is completely beholden to Ezekiel Elliott. Coming up, Bucky Brooks stops by an NFL player, an NFL scout, now writes for the NFL Network and broadcast, podcasts, and all that stuff. His thoughts, we got training camp, we got a couple of teams. Everybody's healthy so far. Knock on wood, cross your fingers. Everybody is healthy so far. That's coming up. A major credit card company has announced a data breach that is actually very, very frightening. Okay? Current credit card customers and credit card products, a security incident affected over 100 million people, okay? And cyber criminals were able to get credit card products over a 14-year span, 2005 to 2019. How many people were affected? Well, that's why you need to protect your personal info from data breaches, Criminals can open accounts, file a tax return. So many ways they can take what is rightfully yours. That's where LifeLock Security Theft Protection, which has added the power of Norton Security, protects your devices. The average home has 17. Nobody prevents all, but they'll spot them, and you can't. Go to LifeLock.com, code HURT, or call 1-800-LIFELOCK and use the code HURT. 10% off your first year with both. LifeLock Identity Theft Protection. Watch out for the cyber criminals.